Welcome back to another episode of Steve Talks About Night Vision Stuff. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Infrared FAL19, which is a brand new product from Infrared. This is a thermal fusion sight. Um, it's not really a hollow sight, a uh, true holographic sight like an EOTech. It's more similar to a red dot. Uh, basically, there's an LCD screen at the bottom, which is projected upwards uh, against the glass that's angled at 45 degrees to um, show you a reticle, and in this case, um, you know, the thermal signatures that's gathered by the front lens. So I'll start my way from the front and work my way to the back. We'll talk about the controls, uh, image quality, zeroing, reticles, all of that good stuff. So first of all, um, as the name suggests, the FAL19 has a 19mm uh, thermal lens. Um, so why is that important? As I mentioned in our last video, uh, objective lens size is going to be your primary determining factor in terms of detection range. So in this case, a 19mm lens um, published values, I think, around 500 meters in terms of detection um, for a man-sized or a person-sized target. Um, and then moving back from there, you also get a, a protective rubber cover that covers up this germanium lens uh, when it's not in use, keeps the dust out and protects it from any, um, you know, debris or things that might be knocking into it. Moving on to the side, we have a side Picatinny rail. Uh, I've been told that this is for a future laser range finding module. I'm not sure how useful it would be for a 1x optic, but it's there. Um, and then moving on to the side, we have a multifunction dial. So this dial actually functions, um, you can actually press it uh, to go through your menu system. You can hold it, which enables a secondary red dot only. Uh, so it's literally just a, just a dot, it's basically like an aim point on top of the actual thermal reticle circle dot. Um, and I'll get into what the reticles are when we get to kind of the rear screen. On the bottom here is a spring-loaded recoil absorbing uh, Picatinny mount with a built-in recoil lug, uh, basically a wing nut to uh, tighten it. Um, and moving on to the side, you have uh, the ability to zero. And these controls, uh, these zeroing controls is for the red dot only. So the little, um, I think it's like a probably a one or two MOA dot. Um, this is just a, just in windage and elevation. Uh, you have an off-board uh, USB-C interface to provide power. And also, this will also do a analog video output. Uh, this unit takes two CR123As and it provides about three to four hours of battery life. Uh, but again, you could you could choose to not use them and run off-board power if you wanted to. And moving on to the back here, there's basically only two controls, uh, the power button, which you hold to turn on um, and you hold to turn off. The P button is, is basically kind of a multifunction button. Uh, basically, you can press it to do uh, what we would call is NUC or non-uniform correction. Um, we'll get into what your non-uniform correction is when we uh, publish our thermal overview video. Um, in terms of what you can also do with the P-Buzz, if you hold it, it actually goes through um, the different thermal modes. So this unit has four modes, basically green hot, uh, black hot, outline, and highlight. So what we found just from our experience working with this or using this is the highlight button, the highlight mode seems to work the best, at least we feel. Um, so you're not, this whole screen is just overwhelmed with like total green. Um, the, the other reason why we like it is because it only highlights what you really want to see with thermal. Um, also the thing that, the reason why full thermal and the, the green reticle doesn't work so well is because the, the, the green circle dot uh, tends to kind of get lost in the uh, in sort of the thermal image. So as I mentioned before, the unit comes with uh, basically a circle dot standard reticle. Uh, this reticle, you can actually brighten it up to be daylight bright, and you can actually dial it all the way to back down so that it's night vision compatible. So it's not gonna bloom out your night vision uh, or anything like that. Uh, there are not really selectable reticles per se, uh, with the exception of the fact that there's uh, sort of a dual reticle system. And let me explain what that is. So essentially on board this unit, there's two projectors. One is uh, sort of the screen that handles the circle dot and the thermal image. That's being done by one screen. And then on the side here, which I mentioned earlier, is uh, just a dot only. So for example, if you wanted to use this as just a simple red dot, you simply turn the thermal plus circle dot off and you can actually use um, the regular dot on its own. The other thing you could also do that could be quite useful is if you wanted to zero this optic during the day, 
with the regular dot. Um, it's very simple to basically then turn on your um, thermal circle dot image and get everything lined up that way. Uh, so that's pretty useful. Um, one thing I also forgot to mention is that this unit does two, 1x and 2x uh, digital zoom. Not too sure why you would want to do that because the window itself stays at 1x. Uh, meanwhile, the thermal can go to 2x. Um, kind of a gimmicky thing. Maybe some people will find a use for it. Just not really too sure. Uh, we had some kind of we had some users mention uh, you know basically there's a bit of a notch filter so if you can kind of see how the light looks like um, essentially what a notch filter is is is, is basically the the screen has some tint applied to it to make the reticles seem brighter um, beyond obviously you know anti glare uh, benefits and such so from our experience um, as you can see you can still see what you need to see through the notch filter. Uh, but when you're using this in a sort of a both eyes configuration, which you normally would with a 1x optic like this, your other eye essentially provides the additional supplementary information to uh, basically overcome that. So going through the menu system now, uh, the first menu item is the different thermal modes. And like I said before, you can actually switch through these without going through the menu system by holding down the P button. Uh, so this is highlight, this is outline, which also has a pulse function associated with it. This is black hot, and this is full thermal uh, green hot. So basically that's black hot, green hot, outline, and highlight. So like I said, like I said before, uh, highlight seems to work best uh, in, our, in our opinion. Moving on to the next menu item is just contrast. Um, I guess this just makes the hot things hotter or brighter. Um, so you can adjust that to whatever you'd like. Next one is the actual uh, overall brightness of it. So as you can see on this mode, uh, that's gonna be your night vision setting. And the reticle does get bright, quite dim. And then if you max it out, it basically makes it look like, it basically it goes nuclear, it's daylight bright. Uh, I'm just gonna turn that back down. Uh, next one is the actual reticle brightness. So if you wanted to turn the reticle down independent of the image, you can do that. And then this one is controlling uh, auto non-uniform correction or auto NUC. Um, so for example, for those of you who use thermals a lot, you'll notice sometimes your device clicks and um, basically what it's doing is it's self calibrating based on the internal temperature of the thermal core. So you can actually set that to be manual if you want it to be, uh, or just simply off or auto. Uh, I just like to leave it on auto. So moving into the actual advanced menu system, uh, I've switched to full thermal because the next part I'm going to show you is going to be it's going to be useful to show the full thermal and you'll see why in a sec. The first menu item is the zeroing. The second menu item is to either hide or either hide or show the reticle. The next menu item you can between, decide between uh, green hot for the reticle or black hot. So obviously if you were in highlight mode the black hot reticle obviously doesn't make that much sense which is why I'm showing you guys the full thermal. Uh, but if you guys are using highlight mode like we are, you'll probably wanna just enable the reticle and have it be green hot. The next one is to enable or disable analog video output. So using the USB-C cable, it actually comes with a cable that can do uh, or actually output uh, the analog video to like a DVR or a recorder or something like that, that, that takes analog video signal. Uh, sorry, go back in here. This one is, uh, it takes CR123As, which is three volt, or if you have rechargeables, um, it takes 3.7 volts as well, and you can select that. And the reason why that's important is if you're using, it correctly displays and measures the battery voltage and gives you the right battery level. So obviously if you have CR123As, which is three volt, but your battery settings on 3.7, it'll always read low battery. So it's important that you set the right battery type for the battery you're using. Uh, next is just factory reset, and that brings us back to the original main menu. So that's the, essentially the entire menu system. So what we're showing here is the red dot with the green circle dot. And what you can do here is if you wanted to just remove the circle dot, you can just go into the menu system and go to the advanced settings. And then you can disable the circle dot reticle. So that way you just have a regular red dot with a thermal overlay. And then if you just come out of the menu system itself, what you can also do is you can actually switch this dot from 
red to green, and I think it's available in different brightnesses. Yep. So the green has three brightness levels, as does the red. Um, so obviously you can play around with this. Uh, you can have obviously red and the green circle dot, um, or just the green circle dot with the green thermal. You can go full thermal if you'd like. So obviously you can set this up whichever way uh, suits you and suits your requirements and your preferences. So back to the bench now. A um, couple things I forgot to mention is this has a 50 hertz refresh rate, so it's gonna be relatively lag free in terms of the thermal image and what you see uh, in real life. Uh, and then and the other thing is it actually, they shipped us a 3X magnifier with this, although it did not come in the box. So I'm just waiting to confirm whether or not the 3X magnifier is included or if it's an optional add-on. Uh, I'll leave that information as an update in, in the description once I find out. Um, but essentially the magnifier and the optic um, are perfectly aligned. So we actually tested this out. It's, the magnifier is actually better. I felt like it was better than the EOTech G33 uh, in the sense that the eye box was a lot better. Uh, you don't have to be sucked right up close to it like you do with the G33. Uh, it has a flip to side, force to overcome. Um, is it compatible with other magnifier footprints? Don't know. Don't have other magnifiers to test it out on. Uh, and then I guess the last, one of the last things is uh, the weapon mount is actually spring loaded. Uh, and what I mean by that is essentially it's recoil absorbing. So um, as some of you may know, thermal devices being that it's essentially a digital camera is pretty sensitive to recoil. So the, um, the, the recoil, so basically the mount will absorb some of that to take some of the harshness away if you're using larger caliber rounds and things like that with this, uh, with this site. So who do I think that this particular site is for, uh, being that it's a bit of a close range CQB um, type optic? Um, I don't think it's necessarily well suited for force on force applications uh, for two reasons. One is obviously the fact that there's a germanium lens out front that's relatively unprotected, as well as this really large window, which is good for viewing, but unfortunately uh, very prone to um, you know debris and BB strikes and things like that. I think this device gives you a phenomenal level of capability in this form factor without having to you know make you use like like, like a caudi if you don't like using a caudi attaching additional devices to your night vision um, this works during the day in all weather conditions um, it also gives you uh, ability to overcome things like photonic barriers so for example if someone was shining a light at you you can still see the uh, thermal heat signature through that through the optic identify and highlight it for you. Um, so there are definitely strengths uh, in this particular system. Um, like I said before, I just don't think that this is something that, you know, airsofters could really consider at this point in time, unless, uh, you know, they're, they don't care or they're able to design and make a couple of protectors for them. Uh, that's something we might do in the future if, uh, you know, the popularity of this platform increases. But just at this point in time, it's, we just feel like it's a pretty, it is a pretty niche product um, just really advanced capabilities but with you know being so advanced and specialized the target audience starts to narrow down quite a bit okay guys so hopefully you found this video helpful if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos and we'll see you on the next one